Welcome back to Exterilera. So we've uh, finally now making a start on the uh, scenery, on the layout, uh, obviously moving aside from the platforms, which was uh, the last video. I've now begun to close in all the frames and I'm concentrating on building up all the scenery in and around the station area. This video I'm just going to focus on things like the uh, roads, car parks, pavements, that sort of stuff. Uh, so this is quite a long descriptive video and uh, there will be another video release shortly after which will give a insight of how I create realistic concrete. So sit back watch and enjoy and uh, as always at the end got any questions comments uh, please drop them down in the comments section and um, look forward to answering anything that comes along. Okay so before I make a start on um, closing in the frames a um, bit of planning and preparation work to do first and um, as you can see I've placed a little block of wood there of a, a rough sketch of a small portion of the station building. This is normally the front part of uh, the building where the canopy um, pops out over the top of the platform and uh, the main part of the building itself will sit uh, roughly where obviously the open frame is at the moment. So having the use of uh, Google Earth uh, always comes in very handy. They also have a measuring tool on it as well which will give you a not so much of an accurate measurement but something pretty close to the, uh, the real thing which comes in quite useful for uh, sort of building sort of you know to, to, to scale. So all I've got is another piece of wood and hopefully that should give me something of a full width of the station building. So where the station building will sit, what I'm going to do is start with a piece of 9mm plywood and uh, that's going to be placed so it actually fits and sits level to the first piece of plasterboard. So with the remaining part of um, the station uh, forecourt, so the, the road outside, uh, has a lot of variation in, in the road and I want to try and achieve that on this by having obviously the, the camber on the road and rather than just being a completely flat deck. So it makes sense to add a piece of plywood here to build up the rest of the foundations for the station and once that's in place I'll then work on building the actual road itself in front of the station. So um, with this piece, what I'm going to do is uh, attach this the same sort of way as I, I built the track decks using the uh, pieces of ply support underneath and then get this piece in place. As I've got a small lip uh, with the uh, top ply deck here, what I'm going to do is further down because the plasterboard sits almost to the edge of the ply. I'm just going to run the surf form plane along this edge and also just to get it a bit straighter than what it already is. And that'll allow me to actually sit that 9mm nine piece, nine piece of plywood on top of here.
Okay, so moving over to um, the north end, what I've done is I've installed these um, additional pieces of uh, plywood clamped to the sides and uh, run a piece of batten across the top. And the same process as the uh, station side, I'm going to place a sheet of plywood down on top of these. So the same process with this, what I'm going to do is just uh, run a bead of glue across the top of the um, these pieces and then just lay the, the plywood straight down on top of there. So just going to wait for the uh, glue to dry that holds the uh, plywood onto the battens underneath and uh, come back and I'll, as I say, join that section in and then just make any adjustments to any of the uh, uprights underneath. Okay, so the joy of having the plywood down at this stage means that I can just mark out exactly or roughly where I need to place the plasterboard surface. Um, far end of the car park has a brewery and uh, just probably going to add something in the corner there, something of my own design, just to sort of add a bit of personal touch to it. I've scoped out where the roundabout goes at the uh, entrance of the level crossing, and uh, unfortunately, not much I could do with that. So, in case we're just cutting the landscaping around that before it then continues up outside the front of the station. So as the area outside the uh, station is, obviously this is the extended part of the platform, this part will uh, be the road and uh, most roads do have uh, some kind of camber to them so I picked myself up a few of these from Hobbycraft. I'm going to use these to create some undulations and stuff in the road. So these uh, little wooden sticks or lollipop sticks are approximately about 1.5 to 2 millimeters thick. And um, what I'm going to do is carefully place them in the middle of the road. And then with a the plasterboard road surface, that will act as a nice gentle camber in the road. So just having a play around with um, the sticks, uh, put them in the uh, areas where I think they'll look the best, and uh, I've got to make sure I've got a nice transition around this area because it's where the level crossing or the road up to it leads. And uh, seeing this area just here will allow for a nice sort of bump in the road, and. Uh, I've just placed a few of the sticks on the outer part of the road just so there's not too much of a camber in the road. And again at the top end, just place some sticks again on the outside of the road as I've gone for a slight variation in the level of the road on that area there. So I'm going to get all these uh, lollipop sticks glued down.
there we go. So basically all I've done is uh, gone over the joints uh, with some tape and uh, just filled those over. All the holes are completely filled. So the uh, plasterboard itself with a sanding block is easy enough to rub down. It's just a case of just making sure that it's all uh, nice and flush. So looking up the, um, the complete length of the road, you just about see where all the undulations are created by where I put the lollipop sticks underneath. And um, I've also left a gap between the two pieces of plasterboard which will enable me to fit the um, the dividing wall between the actual road and the car park itself. So I've also marked out um, in red marker pen where all the edges of the road are and where curb stones will be placed. If I paint over those the, um, the lines will eventually bleed back through the paint anyway so at least I know where they will be. Also as well just the join um, with the plasterboard into the plywood uh, that's been taped over and filled just to uh, feather that joint out. So all in all quite happy with how that's turned out. Okay so looking at the uh, paints that I'm using for uh, doing the road surfaces. Just simply picked up some uh, cheap Hobbycraft uh, ready mix paint in black and white. I also use raw umber and I'm also using portrait pink. Now the reason I'm using the portrait pink um, being the Devon area there's a degree of redness uh, to a lot of the road surfaces um, being that from either just the tarmac or the fact that there's a lot of red soil in the area and it gets washed across uh, a lot of the road surfaces so the portrait pink um, kind of creates that effect in a way and obviously the raw umber is just there for uh, dirt and grime. All these are available from Hobbycraft. On top of that just got myself an old one inch brush and you'll want yourself a um, a palette or a tub just to mix some paints up with. So literally just taking a mixture of uh, the black and the white. Just gonna mix that up and uh, most of that's gone in the paintbrush and it's way too dark so I'm just gonna increase, increase the white into it. I try and aim to get something fairly light to start off with. And it doesn't have to be fully mixed at this stage. And then I'm going to simply apply this. I'm going to try and aim for something that's fairly thick, so I don't really want to brush it out too much, so the more brush marks you get it, the better it looks. What I try and aim to do with uh, the road surfaces is not to have just a uniform colour all the way over, and you think most roads will have like a darker patches where tyre tread may be, and it may be slightly lighter in the middle of the road, so I'm just going to Start now with the random colours of using the whites and the blacks just to create some shade differences around the road surface in various places. Now you want to aim to be as random as you possibly can on this. So a very small amount of black just in the middle.
I'm going to move on to using a few random spots of the uh, the portrait pink just to get that kind of redness into the road surfaces. I think it all comes down to location, so always check sort of like images of any location of any roads that you're modelling. You can say some places might be slightly green or other particular shades as well. What I then try and do is I just want to try and add a bit of burnt all the uh, raw umber colour. I'll apply that straight to the brush and all I'm going to do is just try and get that along mainly along the edges which is where you typically see a lot of dirt and grime kind of building up So as I'm finishing up, what I intend to do is just use white uh, square straight onto the brush. I'm just going to apply random white streaks in various places. So that's basically what you're trying to achieve. Uh, just a multiple of colours, plenty of uh, white sort of streaks, black streaks, and um, not sure where it picks up on camera, but the area along the back here, just on the next piece of plasterboard, is actually going to be a footpath just outside the station building. And uh, looking at a lot of pictures, the, the uh, tarmac on the footpath itself was actually more of a of a kind of a, a pinky tinge to the grey so I've kind of completely changed the colour of that from the road itself. Okay so the road surface itself is uh, now completely dry and uh, just drawn in pencil uh, the outline of things like where pavements and curb stones are going to be and there's a area outside the main entrance of the station building which has a slight arch um, paved area and uh, just bringing in a Oxford die cast vehicle just to get an idea of widths of roads and stuff like that. And uh, this particular area here is normally a give way, so the traffic would normally come up with anything sort of parks here would normally be, would have to give way to the traffic. Uh, whether it's still the same, or whether it was the same back in the 90s, um, I would have thought not much would have changed in terms of the infrastructure outside so I'm going to kind of copy of what it is up to date. So what my plan is now is to try and add a bit of variation to the actual road surface itself so obviously everything all runs in one direction and uh, bearing in mind when they tarmac road surfaces for example they may tarmac this section as a completely different uh, tarmac co compared to what this might be basically um, get the uh, sort of different transitions from one section of road to another I've simply just masked off uh, this area here which means that I'll repaint this area uh, creating the illusion that obviously the tarmac's going in this direction um, I've also just at the back there taped up another little section and I'll also dab that into another area into another colour and uh, that will represent something that might have just been completely dug up and re-tarmacked as there might be potholes. And as always the uh, the method is you know exactly the same as I did with the uh, the first surface. I'm going to try get a nice edge along the front where the uh, curb stones are. 
Now this is quite dark, so I would of course just uh, using the same method, just tone it all down again. Quite happy with those in terms of the tones. I've also added a, a very small area along here, uh, sort of roughly up to the other side of the road, uh, where I may put like a, a manhole or, or drain cover or something like that in that area. Um, and what I've done with uh, repair patches, I've actually dabbed those in with a sponge, uh, just using a slightly darker shade around the outer edge. So for the finishing touches on the road surface, I've got myself a slightly worn in sanding block. And uh, what I'm going to do is just go over the surface with this. And it's vital um, that you make sure that you sort of keep in line or sort of uh, sand in the direction of where the traffic's going. So, for example, I sort of just brought the sand in block into this area here to make it look like the traffic comes in here, parks up, and then passengers get out, and away it goes. I'm taking a look at areas similar to this um, where the filler was uh, covering the screw heads. Not a problem because I can just grab a sponge and just. cover those areas up and this will dry lighter as it all as it is at the moment but another little key feature that I do as well is to create some contrast in the tarmac by just using a relatively dry sponge with a little bit of paint on it just to create those sort of marks where you get the divide from the, uh, the two pieces of road. Okay, so I've also picked up a printed sheet of uh, various drain covers uh, from Scow Model Scenery and uh, also got the um, curb stones as well from them. And there's apparently around about three meters worth of curb stones on here so I'm going to cut these out and get them painted. I've already made a start on uh, laying the curb stones as you can see and uh, before I do that what I've done is I've given these a coat of paint uh, as a contrasting color to the actual roads and the pavement itself though the pavement's not finished it will be slightly different shade uh, to what it sits at the moment with the curbs themselves, um, once they're painted, I'll sort of leave them for about 10 minutes um, and that enables them to sort of soak up some of the paint and the uh, water in the paint and makes them uh, a little bit more bendy. So as an example here, if I want to be able to bend this 90 degrees, then I can normally do that quite easily. And they don't actually break. So I'm going to carry on with uh, laying these down on here and all I'm sticking them down with is uh, some simple PVA wood glue. So I'm just going to use a fine paintbrush and uh, brush the glue on rather than squirting it straight from the bottle you've got more control this way than you would if you were just to take it straight from the bottle. As simple as that, these are uh, 
quite easy to work with. Um, as I say, they bend quite nicely. And uh, obviously along the front edge here, the uh, glue does dry a little bit shiny, but uh, I'll deal with that later on with some uh, weathering tones, which will uh, dull down the shine off of that and make it blend into the curb stones. Now looking at the front of this area here, um, how this works normally at outside St David's, and I don't think the infrastructure has changed at all, uh, is cars obviously would come in this way, and um, this area here would actually be a dropped curb area, and uh, I assume that is sort of specific uh, destinated spots for uh, disabled parkers to park closer to the station building. So I'm going to try and get some drop curbs along the front of here. And uh, this area here is uh, normally the entrance to the actual main car park outside as well. So these would be normal height curbs and then they'll drop off then back up again. So to make the uh, drop curbs, what I've done is I've uh, taken a piece of the, uh, the strips of uh, curbs and uh, spliced it straight down the middle. So it now becomes around about one millimetre thick. Um, not the easiest thing to do, so you may not get a perfectly straight cut. So on top of that as well, I've used a sanding block and I'm just going to carefully rub off any frayed edges along the bottom part of the uh, curbs. And the same principle with uh, when you come to do the first curb as it normally goes at an angle downwards is to uh, just cut that at a very slight angle and again just using the sanding block just to take off some of the edges. And that should just, once that's stuck down, that will uh, be low enough for cars and stuff to park up onto the, uh, the parking spaces outside. So you can see the, uh, the difference obviously with the curbs down this end here, then obviously you've got the one curb that drops down, and then these ones just barely sitting above the road surface. So that's the uh, curb stones in, all out uh, the front of the station forecourt itself. And you've got to admit, they do look pretty good. So what I've done now is I've just uh, masked off the top of the uh, curb stones. And I've also, along the front edge, just used um, some of the spare pieces of card that you get within the uh, sprues of the curb stones. Then they'll uh, enable me to, to build the levels up for the pavements. So I've mixed up uh, some polyfiller and uh, the idea of this is just to bed this into all the areas. And all the gaps that are where the curb stones meet the plasterboard. So once I've, I've leave the filler for probably about five, ten minutes, and then uh, I'll just grab a nice soft brush and uh, using some water, just smooth gently over the surface of the filler. And that way that should save any uh, need to sand it down afterwards, which will probably more likely do more damage and good so there may be some areas which may need some sanding or some very light sanding but this way works best at this stage um, I'm just going to go back into 
palette of a few different colours again, some grey, some white, and uh, the uh, pinky colour as well. I'm just going to dab. Using a small sponge, just trying to, trying to create a different effect on here. Obviously the roads are going to have a lot more wear from uh, traffic, whereas pavements are generally going to have that sort of different different texture. So the pavements are now completely sponged over and uh, I'm not sure whether it picks up much on camera but there is a, a contrast between now and the roads and the pavements so I'm going to leave that to dry and then just go over lightly again with the sanding block and uh, just take the, uh, the harshness off the paint itself once that's done hopefully I should be able to remove the uh, masking tape and that's done its job in protecting the curb stones. So that's the first part that I've just uh, peeled off the masking tape just to have a sneaky peek and uh, quite pleased that it's obviously fully protected the curb stones. Um, but obviously there's a bit of tiny bits of grit on there. Um, so what I'll do is I say I'll, I'll rub those over with a sanding block and um, where I've uh, misjudged the pencil lines along there Again, I'll probably blend those in um, with some more paint, make it look like uh, repair patches on the road. And again, just looking at this section as well with the uh, with the drop curbs, it's difficult to pick it up from this side, but uh, you can sort of definitely notice the first curb just there as it begins to drop off, and then you've got the, uh, the remaining curb stones virtually at road level. The next thing I want to take a look at is uh, getting all the uh, drain covers and manhole lids etc um, in position. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a nice snap off blade and just uh, remove a few of these and show you how I'm going to install them. So the manhole cover um, this is part of the sewer system, so uh, placed it roughly where I want it. And what I'm going to do is just try and hold it down with a with a pencil, and I'm going to carefully with, with the uh, sharp knife cut around it. Is I should. Be able to get in there and pull the top surface of paper off of this. <laughs> and then, scale model scenery recommend uh, if you go around the, uh, the edges of the actual drain cover because obviously it's cut out from white card, so you can end up the white edges grey pen and I'm going to pop pop that down into the road and that leaves it completely flush to the surface on areas like this area here where I've uh, obviously used polyfiller in there to to uh, build the level up and uh, blend it in with the uh, plasterboard behind uh, obviously it's not possible to be able to remove a piece of paper because there's none there but um, the same principle I'll do with this is just to cut round another manhole if I'm on the polyfiller areas and then just carefully scrape away at the polyfiller so I can actually then sink the manhole cover down into the uh, polyfiller. So now's the time to start considering um, putting down the road markings on the roads and um, not really much in the way of research other than sort of having a quick glance at some of the roads when I've been out and about driving. Uh, for example, give way markings themselves are roughly around about two foot long um, with a one foot gap between each uh, individual stripe. On the um, 
part where you have to give way they're normally doubled up whereas the uh, opposite side of the road with traffic coming into the junction would normally be of a single width center line road markings normally vary apparently between anything from two to five meters in length and that all comes down to what type of road that you're traveling on for example if you're on a motorway the length of those stripes are probably going to be longer than that of a built-up area I've also had a quick look on Google Earth and just used the measuring tool again and um, the roads down the other end of the layout where the car park is, the road along there actually the, the, the centre road stripes are around about 4 metres. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of plastic card and I've actually cut it to the width of one half of the road and um, I've drawn roughly the road markings on where I would need to place each in individual white stripe so that will make up a white stripe then there'll be a space before the next white stripe another space and so forth for um, actually doing the uh, road markings I'm simply using a edging pen um, which is pretty much a paint marker pen and uh, these can be picked up from any uh, stationery shop for a, about three or four quid uh, you can buy Woodland Scenics um, road marking pens but they are generally similar to this anyway and they cost easily twice as much. So to start with the uh, first road marking what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the plastic card as an edging tool for the actual road markings and I'm just going to start off with the small centre divide line. And just lining the tool up or the, uh, the jig. I'm now just going to use this as a guide to drawing in the uh, giveaway markings. And there you have it, simple as that. So what I'll do is I'll repeat the same thing on the other side but obviously I'm going to go for a double thickness on this side as this this is this side where you have to give way to of the oncoming traffic. So as you can see I've um, added another line just behind the uh, first row and uh, that then gives you the giveaway markings and um, just to take any shine off the actual paint is uh, just again to go over it with a sanding block which will also create the illusion that the, the uh, paint on the road itself is actually wearing away like just like the real thing. So the road markings down at the level crossing end I've uh, done those by just uh, placing a piece of 20 millimeter wide masking tape and uh, again just using the straight edge and the marker pen just literally gone over the edge of the uh, the masking tape and that will give me perfectly straight lines at the end so there's no there's no roundness to the end of them stripes that you get with uh, using the pen and then just all of a sudden stopping as the nib is round so each of these stripes here they measure about 48 millimeters so it's just over twice the width of a piece of masking tape.